One look at Playboy Cardi and you wouldn't really think he's the type to be in any legal trouble, have jarring allegations, or anything problematic in general. He's often seen in makeup, he paints his nails, and walks runway shows. However, he's far from what most people think of him as. In fact, he's been in more legal trouble and street beef than your average street rapper. And some of the members of his label have even crazier allegations. I'm Rashad Fashir, and this is the shocking allegations of Playboy Cardi's opium. But before we talk about the label's allegations, who are they? Opium is a label founded by Playboy Cardi sometime in 2020 to increase his influence and by introducing some young rappers who fit his sound to the industry, including artists such as Ken Carson, Destroy Lonely, and Homicide Gang. Since then, Ken Carson has gone on to have over a billion streams, and all the other artists are well on their way themselves. However, they each have some pretty crazy allegations that are pretty worrying, so let's get into it. Starting with the rapper who founded Opium, Playboy Cardi himself. Although Cardi looks like a pretty chill guy, he actually seems to be a wolf in sheep's clothing as he has a history with violence and some pretty crazy street connections. Starting off with his history and allegations of violence, especially in relationships, dating all the way back to his teenage years. Back then, he was dating the now famous model Ruby Rose, who he knew since high school. According to Ruby, Playboy Cardi would routinely just unload the clip of his gun off of her balcony. Okay. And he was living with me, so I don't like when people like, because people always assume that, um, yeah, he would go to your house. He would come to my house and I lived in the hood in Pittsburgh and like people would shoot all the time and he would like shoot off my balcony. But then like one time, um, <clears throat> and one day after they got into a fight and Ruby took his phone time, um, <clears throat> we got in a little argument because I hit his phones before his flight and it just was like we were outside. He, he, he like it wasn't directly at me. It was just more like he said they were just young. I mean, can we just can we just touch on that one thing? No, but me and him were crazy. So like we were young, crazy. I lived in the hood. He would always shoot his gun off my balcony. And like one time I wait, think wait, 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 wait. And I guess this is an all right excuse if he had done something like this once. However, it just got worse. And pretty soon, he'd get into a number of legal situations regarding this type of behavior. In July of 2017, Cardi was arrested for domestic battery after he was seen in a shoving match with a woman and grabbing her by the backpack and forcing her into an Uber at the Los Angeles International Airport. He was almost immediately arrested and was released on a $20,000 bond the next day. The next month, the charges were dropped for unknown reasons. In 2018, he did it again. That February, in Scotland, he was charged with trashing a tour bus and giving the driver the beats. However, Cardi's tour managers maintained that Cardi was acting in self-defense, but a witness had a different story, saying, I saw things being thrown around the tour bus, and then a man ran across and punched the driver in the face, cutting him and knocking his glasses off. He explained, it was the accused Cardi who had been standing with the group, but as the two guys tried to restrain him, he wriggled past them, ran across, and punched the driver who stumbled back. The driver did not do anything to him and did not retaliate. I guess they were correct because in January, Cardi was convicted and ordered to pay $1,030 for assault and another $386 for reportedly damaging one of the driver's windows. But these didn't really make crazy headlines, as Cardi's mugshots were never released and his PR team did a very good job with keeping it hush and on the low. However, they wouldn't be able to save him from the embarrassment from his next run-in with the law. In the middle of 2020, a mugshot got released of Cardi and fans were like, what? as no one had heard from him online in a while. What ensued was a really random and had fans very confused. It turned out Playboy Cardi was riding in his Lambo, you know, rapper stuff, and was pulled over by the cops for having an expired tag. Once pulled over, the cops then decided to search the car and found a couple of things. They found three water guns, 12 bags of funny grass, some Tic Tacs of different kinds, and uh, some orange juice that sick adults take. Basically, a whole lot of substances and weapons, all inside of Cardi's car. He was then promptly arrested, booked in county jail, Jail and released the next day after posting bond. Bro was locked up for five minutes. Of course, fans were confused how he was found with all that stuff and got released the next day. It turned out his friend Jalen Tucker, who was riding the car with them, stepped up and took the charge. And later, it was revealed that that wasn't some random friend. It was Opium Baby, aka the co-founder of Cardi's label, Opium. After this, fans were really concerned about what was found in the car and not for his safety, but his health. A lot of fans thought Cardi was one of those rappers who rapped about substance use and other things but didn't actually do it. So they were surprised when they found out he was really about that life. He looked healthy. They should have known better though. To them, he didn't look like he was the type to be 
strung out. One fan wrote, I'm a huge fan of Cardi and have been for years. I don't know what happened, you can see it in his face. The dude's 23 and looks about 30 in his mugshot, where it looks like it's aged him by years. It's kind of worrying. So clearly, they were very concerned. But the worst was yet to come. In 2022, when Playboy Cardi was arrested for something pretty horrific. However, fans didn't find out till months later, in February of 2023, when TMZ obtained a police report and a mugshot of the situation. Playboy Cardi alleged to have assaulted girlfriend over paternity test. Lawyer says he's been falsely accused. Playboy Cardi was arrested back in December. This was his mugshot. He was arrested for allegedly choking out a girl that was supposedly pregnant. Here's what happened. The allegations are that Playboy Cardi physically harmed and choked his pregnant girlfriend. Same girl he was with when he was allegedly caught cheating on his ex-girlfriend, Iggy Azalea. And here are the actual charges. Aggravated assault, hindering a person making an emergency phone call. And according to the police report, here's how it all went down. Cardi's girl told the police she arrived at his property on December 20th, 2022 at 4 p.m. to speak with him about the baby she was four months pregnant with at the time. She then said, she was dating Playboy Cardi for two years and even lived at the property for less than a year. Rose recently kicked out the home. Nice one, Cardi. She then explained that while having a verbal argument with the suspect, aka Cardi, he attacked her. She stated that the suspect grabbed her by the throat and pushed her into the bushes and said there were two males that worked for the suspect that stood there and watched. Then one of his employees jumped into the fight to break them up because the suspect was holding her by the neck. The victim stated she couldn't breathe. Then once free, she tried to get in the car and was attacked again by Playboy Cardi, who attempted to pull her out of the car while covering her mouth. Yikes. Once she was able to exit the gates of Cardi's property, she pressed the Mercedes-Benz SOS dispatch button in her vehicle and had them call police. However, before police arrived, Cardi and the two men on the scene left in a black SUV. The police report then explained that they asked the victim, aka Cardi's girl, multiple times for the suspect's information, but she was kept anonymous by her. She stated that she did not want to give the name of the suspect due to the fact that it might hit the media and damage his career, which is just sad, but I guess he had a real one, kind of, I don't know. And there's still more. While making the report, the police stated that there were visible bruises on the victim's neck and in the middle of her back. Nine days later, the police had identified Cardi and arrested him. He was released the next day on a $100,000 bond. What made this even more believable is 11 days before this all happened, the woman Cardi was dating took to her IG story to write, abusers be like, how dare you ruin my reputation by telling people the things I did and said. So this was 100% about Cardi, basically saying that he was forcing her to not speak up about this abuse for the sake of his reputation. And I'm not gonna lie, his fans wouldn't really care. However, his attorney Brian Steele made the announcement afterwards he was innocent. Mr. Carter was falsely accused. This case will be dismissed without any prosecution or litigation, but it likely just meant that his girlfriend, who we've already been over, cares about Cardi's public image, was persuaded into not taking legal action, which is smart as they were having a child together, who would be delivered five months later. And even though he wasn't convicted, a pattern was starting to emerge and it wasn't looking good for him at all. Woman who accused the guy of domestic abuse is gonna stay with the guy and this is gonna turn into nothing. So I agree that it's gonna turn into nothing. It's not a good it's not a good look for Playboy Cardi though, because there has been other cases where he's been accused with um Playboy Cardi, Ruby Rose Airport. After the news was reported, Cardi's ex took to Twitter to confirm that Cardi had involved himself in this type of behavior previously. She said, been there, done that, warned you. Imagine having a pregnant girlfriend and pretending they don't exist until it comes out you like to abuse them too. Basically saying that the same happened to her, which just made the allegations even stronger. However, 99% of fans didn't really care. They were just saying the mugshot was looking cool making it their profile picture, and we're just grateful to be getting any type of news from him. Which is kind of messed up, but it's normal for the Cardi community, who looks at him like a god. And this isn't anything new. Cardi has a history of being a horrible partner. For example, he skipped his son's planned birthday to play the PlayStation with Lil Uzi Vert. See his son be born, he went to Philly to play the PlayStation with Lil Uzi. He thought that was more important than seeing his son be born. Imagine. Imagine spending time playing PlayStation with your friend instead of seeing your first son be, be born. The year prior, his then pregnant fiance had gifted him a Lambo. Christmas! Loser. <laughs> you dork. Afterwards, after allegedly promising to make up the absence, he then canceled a family trip to celebrate the release of his album Whole Lotta Red instead. Kim, this really what you're gonna do? You're gonna not be there for Christmas for your son. That's it. You're about to leave us stranded in LA with not 
and go off, have a little party, have your album party. But hey, if he hadn't done that, we wouldn't have had the picture for this thumbnail for the YouTube video, right? And Cardi is actually yet to sign the birth certificate of his first child. However, what was equally messed up to some fans is how Cardi tried to cover it all up. And he did, successfully, for months, in a kind of genius way. Remember that this news came out months later? Right when it did happen, Cardi had randomly started teasing new music only for nothing to ever drop or have any plans of dropping. He wrote, I love all my supporters, it's time. Time for what, jail? So looking back, fans were like, oh, that's why he posted that stuff, to draw attention away from the charges that were about to surface. But of course, his team was able to keep it under wraps. But this time, not all fans ignored Cardi's allegations. Many were shocked at Cardi's behavior, but also kind of impressed at how he avoided everything so well. One fan asked, how the hell did Cardi not get canceled? Another fan wrote bro really got arrested and right after getting released on bond was like it's time bro time for what time for the next victim but that's actually the tip of the iceberg when it comes to cardi's allegations the next are his alleged gang ties as i said earlier most fans picture cardi as flamboyant and sassy but it turns out cardi is more than the superstar rapper side he shows to the internet and the world he's also allegedly in the streets i got two different lives and when i'm not being king gamble at the time, no one really believed him until fans looked deeper and found out, wait, he may not be lying, and found out that Cardi may be involved in a dangerous street beef between two Atlanta gangs, which he has even alluded to in his music. The gang war he's allegedly between is between two Atlanta gangs, the Backstreet Homicide and the Front Street Henchmen, and he didn't exactly ease the tension by signing a couple members of Homicide to his label either, but we'll go over that later. Homicide gang are Cardi's boys. For example, before he signed them to his label, Cardi has been seen commenting on their Instagram posts, saying three different members, and even repped them hard in whole lot of red, with iconic lyrics such as free problem child, etc, and naming one of the songs after a member, Dino. And he has countless pictures and photos with them as well. So, they're really good friends. But you're probably wondering how and why Cardi has beef with the henchmen, right? Cardi's good friends with a member of Homicide, Lil 1 DTE. They have pictures together, Cardi's in his comments, etc. And they even have a song together named, wait for it, Homicide. But Lil 1 DTE E's dad is a man named Big Bank, who's big in Atlanta, and stay with me here because it'll all tie together. The ops of Playboy Cardi are called Fun Street Henchmen, and they're one of the most hated gangs in Atlanta, beefing with everyone in the city, such as Young Thug's YSL, and also pressed Trippy Red when he was in Atlanta. But the henchman's most known rapper is Ola Rutt, who was pretty hot as an upcoming rapper and has a pretty dangerous history, multiple charges, such as a high-speed chase with the police, and more. If you don't believe that he is, he's currently locked up due to the FBI's Operation Phoenix, an operation that's sole purpose was to lock up the city's most dangerous criminals. So it looked like Cardi and his label have smoke with one of the most dangerous rappers and gangs in Atlanta. But what's interesting is they weren't always beefing. They actually are all from the same place in Atlanta and grew up around each other. They had the same friends. For example, Ola Runt has pics with a lot of Cardi's old good friends. And there are old screenshots of Ola shouting Cardi out. So what happened? Remember Cardi's friend Lil One DTE's father, Big Bank? He used to be one of Ola Ola Runt's biggest supporters, constantly shouting him out, but Ola allegedly betrayed him by not signing to him, which meant that he was now against Cardi and Homicide as well. And that's where the street beef began, with Cardi right in the middle of it all. A lot of disses went back and forth between Cardi's Homicide gang and henchmen, and henchmen would live up to their potential. They dissed Cardi multiple times in songs, as well as for his fashion sense, but things really got serious when a Homicide affiliate and Cardi's very, very close friend Sosa passed away. They were like brothers, and he could be seen everywhere with Cardi, in the studio, playing basketball, FaceTiming, Sosa wore his chain. But in June of 2020, Sosa was taken out, and Cardi was mourning him, even changing his name on Twitter to R.A.P. Sosa, still shouting him out to this day. However, on the other side, the henchmen, they were celebrating, dropping songs as if they were victory laps and saying things like they were smoking Sosa. But just like Cardi, at one point, the henchmen were friends with Sosa, even Ola, which just shows you how weird all of this beef is. Cardi held back a lot due to his mysterious persona that he had to upkeep, no matter what was going on in his personal life, must be tough. But in Whole Lotta Red, Cardi addressed it all in multiple songs. In Stop Breathing, he said, I got mob ties, I'm on demon time, I've been with Lil Demon and Lil Bino, 
He also references Sosa, saying, Ever since my brother died, I've been thinking about homicide, and let the Front Street henchmen know that he's on their block, on the way to Front Street, who say we ain't outside. And he was ready to get back. Spoken on the henchmen, got a guy fried. Just kidding, he already did. Allegedly. Hardy said, I got guys in chain gang on my side. I had someone sh Bola for a pie. Meaning that he had people in jail messing with him that were willing to take out Ola for Cardi. However, from jail, Ola Runt said this, his songs don't bring back dead people. And the biggest dream member of Homicide, Benji Bluebills, who Cardi recently dissed in his song, You're the Moon, and actually makes really good music by the way, remixed Stop Breathing, where he claimed Ola never got shanked. And that really pissed Cardi off because later audio would leak of Cardi saying he could knock Benji off if you wanted to, if you catch my drift. Me, bro. I'm be making up no shit like that. Just from Atlanta, bro. What happened if I get the knocked off, bro? Hey, come on, bro. Y'all can't be playing like that, bro. Get knocked off for real. <laughs> Benji fired back, explaining he wasn't scared, by DMing a fan claiming none of Homicide care about Cardi, he's a joke in the streets, and a clown, and that Homicide gang was extorting Cardi, and making him look like a fool in the streets. He then said Homicide brainwashed Cardi, and now all Cardi's homies were next, after Sosa. Then, another one of Cardi's friends, R5, passed from an overdose, and they started dissing him too. But of course, does this have any validity? Like, is Playboy Cardi's gang that he's affiliated with, Homicide, a real one? According to Atlanta's law enforcement, they are, and a very dangerous one that they plan on making an example out of. The district attorney confirmed that they were working on building cases for multiple rapper-led gangs. Later, someone from the DA's office confirmed that Homicide is one of several street gangs on a road to racketeering charges, and fans were drawing a lot of similarities to Young Thug's YSL case. But other than that, there are a couple of more carefully free allegations after a whole lot of red came out a fan pressed him for not being like that you a you go ahead what you gonna you gonna the phone for a game because you reach him saying you reach him game i don't know you yo now you want to talk what you mean put put the pistol down put the pistol down and fight me put the pistol down and fight don't worry about who i am you're not you're not you're not bit like that you're not bit like that it's cool you're not okay I can't show the rest, but it looked and sounded like Cardi sent him to the other side of Atlanta. He also has some pretty random ones. Back in 2017, when Cardi was blowing up for Magnolia, many rap fans believed he was homosexual. I'm serious. And Cardi said they thought I was gay. He wasn't lying. So the hip hop historian, DJ Academics, took it upon himself to settle the case once and for all. Is Playboy Cardi gay? I gotta get into this f***ing rumor that Playboy Cardi is gay. Is that a homosexual or not? I mean, in New York, I still Millie Rock. But <clears> if, <throat> if, if he's not hiding it in his sock and he's probably hiding it around his yeah, else. let me clarify What's this. Let me on? clarify this. His ex girlfriend then explained she knew he was straight because Cardi would regularly cheat on her with other women. What's this. Going let on? me clarify this. So I had a he would always tell me like who Cardi would cheat on me with. And um, like, because that would be, and then he would always right, be on, like, wait, 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 stop right there. Okay, good to know. Thanks for clearing it up. So it was settled Cardi was a straight heterosexual male. But hey. So it's not true that Playboy Cardi was hiding it in his cock. As far as I know, yeah, actually no. It's not as far as I know. He's not. I and to my knowledge, no. He's Playboy not. Cardi is not homosexual. Is not he's gay. completely straight. You were having with him you never you saw heard it here first. This video isn't called The Shocking Allegations of Playboy Cardi. It's called The Shocking Allegations of Playboy Cardi's label, Opium. The next rapper on Cardi's label with some pretty crazy allegations is none other than Homicide Gang. And if you didn't know, Homicide Gang were never rappers. They just met Cardi at a studio, showed him their first song, and he signed them. And when I say Homicide Gang, I don't mean the whole gang. I mean a duo that consists of two rappers, Nadino and Michi. And the allegations are toward one of them, Bino. In February of 2023, Homicide Bino was accused of bringing a girl backstage who wasn't 18. How did it happen? It started with Reddit, yes Reddit, when a fan exposed them for allegedly fishing for girls who weren't of age at shows. The fan wrote, I was at the show in Indianapolis last night up front. Homicide, Osama, and the other dude, I don't even know his name, took two 15 year old girls backstage and even tried to go backstage with them. Obviously she said no, but that's weird. The girls were obviously not 18 as well 
it's not like they looked old. He then showed proof through Snapchat and DMs, and the proof was looking pretty solid. Another fan also said that there were other members of Homicide Gang going around finding younger fans. Now I talked to another fan after the show about how affiliates of Bino and Michi, people like Osama, were trying to get girls who weren't 18 backstage, probably gonna pull through friends. So there was that which is true, but now we have the Bino allegations with him and a year old. This was suspicious, but me and many fans were like, hey, you know, he probably didn't know her age, we don't know what happened, and gave him the benefit of the doubt, especially since no one had heard his response yet. However, soon allegations and more importantly a ton of proof began surfacing. There were multiple DMs of homicide gangs swiping up on teenage girls Instagram stories. For example, a DM surfaced of Bino DMing a fan saying, I need you to come back after the show and show me some, only you. The fan wasn't 18. After that, more fans started coming forward with similar stories, explaining they had heard of him doing it too. One fan explained that at the Houston show, Bino was trying to get girls that weren't 18 to come backstage as well as through the people working for the merch. Another fan exposed him because he was getting annoyed that Bino kept trying to take his girl who wasn't 18 as well. And there's some more. However, I do want to preface that these are allegations and Bino is 100% innocent as of now. It's just there were so many cases like this and because of that, I feel like it's fair game to report on it. So as you can see, there was a string of allegations and it didn't look like they were innocent. But of course, Homicide Gang still had time to say their side of the story and clear things up. And you know, you'd expect a rapper to say something along the lines of, hey, in the light of the recent allegations, we'd like to say we would never engage in this type of behavior, yada yada yada, etc. Right? Nope. Instead, Bino decided to post this to the story. All y'all want to play these games and about 20 laughing emojis, explaining to him it was a joke. Which, innocent or guilty, is a horrible response and just such a bad look, especially when you provide like no evidence. So as expected, the fan's response wasn't very positive. One fan said, he's gonna be laughing in jail and big yikes, they might be done so. To me, it's a sticky situation because yes, there isn't really proof that they said they were underage in the DMs. However, it happened so many times, it's crazy. At some point, you just gotta take accountability. However, I do wanna say in their defense, just because someone dm someone doesn't mean they know their age knew what age they were until after the fact now if they followed through with it yes rappers gotta be careful they gotta bring ids and be like yo you can't do anything with us or even chill with us unless you're of a certain age but if it's just like a dm like yo mm, like sometimes you can't tell how how old someone is uh, but it looked like Homicide was creating a history with this, and as a rapper, you gotta ID girls, right? If you get famous, anybody out there, please make sure you ID women when they're back in the green room and whatnot. Like, you don't want to get any allegations like, you know, some rappers we're not going to say, but it happens a lot. And also, to make it clear, no charges were pressed, and they are innocent of making this video. Furthermore, Homicide Gang's violent behavior has also ended up biting Cardi in the back. After their allegations I just spoke about, they were pulled from the Destroy Lonely tour and all other shows. And recently, it came out that Cardi's tour had not started because Live Nation, the company that's sponsoring Cardi's tour, is in a lawsuit against them after they got into an altercation with another rapper named Summers. But there's one more allegation that was raised toward their label, Opium, and it's against Cardi's protege ken carson who was charged with some pretty serious stuff by a woman person in general so I, that's something to caveat this whole thing has an allegation of some sorts from a woman or just something in their past to get into it ken carson is alleged just like his uh main he also got into it with the atlanta police at a little uzi concert after he was mistaken for a fan and they tried to remove him. However, regarding his domestic charge, he was unfortunately wrongfully accused, which is messed up and no one really deserves that. In 2022, a year after the false charges were pressed, Ken was proven innocent and never spoke on it. Title Battery Domestic Violence. Notice that the bond is zero dollars. So just because someone got charged with a crime does not necessarily mean that they did it. Basically, the legal system is you get charged and then you go to court or you have like an negotiation with the cops whatever and they have to prove that you actually did it so anybody could get charged i could get charged for so overall these allegations are pretty shocking mostly cardi's and binos and just one last time i do want to say they are all allegations
This video is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. You know, Cardi or none of these people have been convicted of anything, and neither is Bino. They do have a lot of charges though, and Ken Carson has been proven innocent. I just think that the juxtaposition of the way Cardi portrays himself online and in the media compared to the severity of these allegations is pretty crazy, but that's just my two cents. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. My name is Rashad Fashir. Thanks for watching. Bye.